More. Welcome to the Whiskey Roundtable. We are your hosts. Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doug Dunbar. And what? we are back. Right. We're back. What's up, kids? Oh. Been a long know. week for sure. Tough week for you guys. <laughs> was a tough week yeah, for us guys. It was a tough yeah. week. It was a tough week. So we lost a very, very good friend of ours. And uh, it, it, it sucks and it's, it's, uh, it's just bad news. So. so we dedicate the show to him we tonight? We dedicate the show to Louis Mantosh today. Love All you, right. Lou. Love you, man. Miss you. I know he's watching. He's laughing at us. He's like, you dumbasses. Yeah. Good guy. <laughs> oh. Didn't know him, but I'm sure I'll hear stories. Oh, the stories. Yeah, we have <laughs> Lots some of stories. stories. Absolutely. I mean, can you imagine growing up with this guy? Come on. How can oh, you yeah. not have great stories? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, man. So, so we, happy uh, May Day yeah, to May everybody. Day. No yeah. Kentucky Derby tomorrow. Yeah. How about that? Uh, huh? I, t- I talk a little bit about that in my, in my uh, yeah. history yeah. thing. I'll go into that. We've we've got an alternative though. There's a Arkansas Derby or. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe. No. Um, One of my good friends, uh, Pokey Hopkins, is is a big big horse racing fan. So I can't imagine how this this is. Like for me, not having baseball, and, but he's got to be dying if there's no derby. Yeah, I uh, I, I heard that uh, the owner of the Browns sold the Browns to uh, to today uh, to get into horse racing because he's pretty much known as a horse's ass anyway. But uh, oh, yeah, see, you got my hopes up. <laughs> I was really excited about that. Mm-hmm. Man, this, uh, you know, this isolation stuff is oh. It's tough. Jesus. I mean, it's. I mean, most people, most businesses. I don't know. I mean, who's happy? Who's benefiting from this thing? If, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Someone talk politics, is. but yeah, somebody's. Maybe the Jehovah me. Witnesses, because <laughs> they know everybody's going to be home. That's it, right. <laughs> I know you guys are in there somewhere. Open the damn door. Mm-hmm. Ah, too funny. Hey, yeah. but there was some breaking news today that we started talking about a little bit before the oh, show. Yeah. Yeah, Kim Jong Un has made, he made an appearance. He made an appearance. Um, we don't know if he's propped up he in the corner somewhere. He didn't say anything. He might be no. taxi derby. He said he was. He was uh, standing at what, what a balcony or something, and he was like this, and the wind blew, and he was like. <laughs> he was teetering. I was kind of hoping, you know, that you know the Ice Queen might be the, the next leader or something. <laughs> We're better off with her brother. Trust me. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Who knows? I never yeah, know. You never, yeah. You know, yeah, be careful what you wish for. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly right. You just might get it. You just yeah. might get it. Wise words. That's right. That's true. Very, very true. I but think we're our iso- we're like forty five days into this thing, something like that right. at this point. Forty five hundred or just yeah. forty five. It feels like forty five years, feel, but yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, this is getting a little little ridiculous. I mean nothing I mean besides actually being home a little more, nothing's really changed on with on my side. You know, as far as work and all that goes, I mean, because we're essential and uh, for both jobs. Money by the minute. <laughs> yeah. Cocktails are acceptable at any time of the day, and no one knows what time it is. Perfect. Look at I'm like, what's wrong with that? Did you just write that? <laughs> You're here all day, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Dear. Too funny. Oh, I have to. I do have to. I do have to bring this up. I know I didn't want to talk about Lou today, but. Uh, one of our childhood friends, we went to school together, uh, Ronnie Fackaday, oh my God. did the eulogy today, and uh, it was more like a stand-up comic, and all, and he, the stuff that he dug into and the things that he said, I still, I'm still laughing. It was unbelievably great. Well, that's and, always uh, good. I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, he was, he was. Uh, he was on a roll. Let's just say no other eulogy <laughs> will ever include what he included today. E- yeah. e- even the people from the funeral home. I mean, it's pretty embarrassing when the, the funeral home embarrasses you and invites you back next week. You know what I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was friggin' hilarious. Oh, my God. They, they were... Come on back. You could line <laughs> things up for the next... And all, uh, all of uh, Lou's friends that he didn't see on a regular basis, they all, they all came... Came and uh, were pallbearers and all that stuff. It was it was just it was for as bad of a situation as it was. It was it was a, 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 it was a celebration and it was a lot of fun. It so was it was as fun so. as it could be, right? 
I don't really know him, but I'm sure that's yeah. what he would have wanted, right? Sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Too fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Just, that's great. <laughs> so I remember we talked about um, that maybe nine months from now there's right. going to be a possible baby boom or mm-hmm. right, as right, a result right. of all this. Yeah. So I was thinking, I was wondering if like in 2033... Like, will they call them like the, the quarantines? Or? Quarantine babies, or what? Are, you know, they, what was the military after the baby boom? But you know, what would they make it? Yeah. Well, twenty thirty three, of course. COVID nineteen. They'll kids. be thirteen years old, so they'll be called the yeah. quarantines. Right. The COVID kids. COVID kids. Crazy. Just well, you're fun. full of one-liners. Do you think, any, I don't know. any young men? What's do you going think, on do you think the, if this is affecting any farm animals? Yeah, <laughs> Are we going to see a big boost in farm yeah. farm animals? That's what I want to know. No, no, no. <laughs> what, what, what was that movie where they were like crossbreeding the duck or something? Oh, crap. Somebody knows that movie. It was with Marlon Brando. Mm. The, anyway. the Island of Dr. Moreau. There you go. Is that what it was? Yeah. Wow, what a pool. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Too funny. Anyway. Boy, do we get... We are all over the board tonight. It's so yeah. funny. Too, yeah. too funny. But what are you smoking there, Greg? I am smoking a uh, one of their house brand cigars from Royal Havana Cigars. Um, it's a, called a Salomon. So it's an Ecuadorian uh, blend cigar. Um, it's a, a special wrap cigar. And it's a odd size uh, where it's smaller on the, on the uh, drag uh, side and bigger on the heat side so for for the ember so it uh it's real big and it comes down into uh more of a narrow and i think we're the only ones besides davidoff um that actually have these cigars that's really cool so as most people say davidoff i call it davidoff but but uh your friend if he's watching could probably correct me on that who has the uh, podcast as well the cigars and uh Cigar podcast. Oh, Chris Snyder's oh. back this week. Oh, Chrissy. Chris. All right. Welcome to Cleveland. <laughs> All right. Which camera am I looking at? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I, I switched. Uh, we're, we're, we're on this one, but I can go to that one if you Let's want to. Let's go to that one. Let's hey, go to Chris. That one. Uh, Pat, any of the Brovern, if you're on, just uh, send What's us, up? drop us a comment or. Pat, no? Pat, Patrick Patterson is on. Oh, Patty's on. All right. Uh-huh. Danny Connery's on. Yeah. Yeah. Connery, Patty's the one Jeff I was Polis. telling you was down at the Huntington Beach and gotcha. in, Cal, in uh, uh, pro- protesting this morning. Is so. uh, is uh, Sean his girlfriend on with the has the uh, fighting chicken? Jennifer. Yes. Jennifer. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. Jennifer. Chicken on. cock. Chicken cock. I just had to say yeah. that. Easy girl. Just, that's Family a good, show. That's a good. <laughs> there aren't many you know appropriate times you can just stick that into mm-hmm. a conversation. No pun right. intended. That's right. But I did. So. Yeah. I'm too funny. Too, too funny. Got it. We've got the uh, Bobsy twins out there in the audience tonight. What do you What do you have? Which cigar are you smoking? This is the chocolate Tatiana. Oh, gotcha. I, actually, this is from last week. It's been sitting down here since last week, and it's still fresh. So. Oh, the hecklers. Oh yeah, our hecklers. Oh, you we woke have, up? Our audience woke up over here. Oh. Hey, glad oh, you're, you're back. Sidecar is here today. Oh. Mr. Richard Brandt is here today. Two of my uh, two of my long long time friends. He gave the what was your name? So uh, my name I don't know. Sometimes I forget. So I got a whole bunch of names for him. Which one? Oh yeah, yeah. So let us uh, for all you out there. Let us know what you're what you're drinking tonight. Yeah, sure. What you're smoking? We're our you know pretty good. Our pre-show drink here is the Henry McKenna Ten. So yeah, I think you should uh, pass this over to Mr. Dunbar. I can do that. And uh, tell them to hook me up. So, uh, you want to hook them up? You know, why don't you hook me up a little bit there, oh, too? There you go. It's been a rough week. Don't get shame. So, as you all know, oh, that now. follow the show, uh, today uh, we are f- featuring uh, Old Forster uh, Single Barrel. And that's actually a store pick specs, which I believe is in Texas. So, that's what we're featured today. Um, that's a huge bottle. It barely fits in that shoe. Barely fits in the high heel. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a hefty bottle. That's. You could probably drop that. It's not going to break. I don't recommend it. Yeah, I've, yeah. No. I've lost a few bottles in my day. I'm not going to lie to you. That's alcohol abuse. You and, can't do that. And, and, yeah. and most of them brand new, but we won't go there either. So, but uh, so that's what we're featured today. Uh, so it is a bourbon night. It's been a while, right? Even, you know, we're kind of a slightly lean the bourbon way here, mm-hmm. but um, we've been mixing it up pretty good with Irish whiskeys sure. and Scot- Scotch. Mm-hmm. So. Yep. Getting back to the bourbon this week. 
I believe that's 90 proof, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. 90 proof. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I actually collect the old Forrester single barrel store picks. So I, have, I actually have that bottle as well. But um, I have them from all over the United States, which is kind of cool. Now, that's a... That doesn't have any, doesn't have a barrel number on it that I could find, but okay. we'll talk about that when we dive into it, but is that one that we got, uh, I got with you, or yes. is that one I got, okay. No, that's, okay. Yeah, I got two of them, and, uh. Are they a store got, pick? Or? They are definitely a store pick. Okay. That's, I, I guess they all are, then. Um, no. Or, or can no, I buy no, it at the can, store is? You, uh, you can, you can get the, uh, single barrels, uh, that are not store picks, but actually, because uh, when I was there last year, I could. They right. didn't have, or they didn't have any. They didn't have any 1910 either. Or so it, I don't know if you remember the show a few weeks ago. We talked. Uh, I talked about the old Forster where the uh, single barrel 90 proof is no longer. So and, they're no, and then they've yeah. eliminated the store pick opportunity, so you can't get store picks anymore. Yeah. Of, old the Forrester? Old Forrester, of old Forster. And when I was at the distillery, of course, they reminded me that because they're a distillery doesn't really mean much because they still have to buy their own product from a distiller mm -hmm. under the rules. So they're limited to what they can offer just like from what the distribution chain, which well, happens to be the topic of this week's uh, Whiskey Wizard, but that'll come up a little bit later. So that's what, Brown Foreman? Yeah, Brown that's Foreman, yeah. That, uh, I don't remember all the other brand right. offerings, like Woodford I think is theirs. Mm -hmm. and there's some other brand offerings that they have, but, um, but uh, we have quite a we have a lot of different. Uh, this has become uh, a they become a personal favorite of mine. Uh, we had a great time at the distillery. I don't know it's the timing, but it was Good Friday last year. We went and they rolled out the red carpet. It was just Sean and I, and we had our own guide and nice. Got to take pictures, mm -hmm. video, whatever we wanted. Brought us back some nice just, trinkets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we we did come back with a pretty good stash, but but still couldn't get the birthday, couldn't get mm -hmm. 1910. There was a lot of things we wanted. They sort of like, hey, we're at the mercy of, of the you know the distribution guys as well. So yeah, and I just kind of when you think about it, it's just funny. And they're doing something with the 1910. Uh, something about um, they were not going to make it for a couple of years. So I'm assuming they're probably revamping that recipe right. so to say and uh putting something else together but the 1910 is probably everybody's favorite in my personal opinion um i love 1910 the the single barrel i definitely love um what about the birthday is that something i've never had the birthday. No? No. i don't have i i had an opportunity uh two years ago to buy uh one of the birthday bottles and i got a phone call where i was at at the liquor store uh out in Strongsville, Market District. Market Dick, yeah, yeah, District in Strongsville. They had it behind the counter, uh, and I was BSing and uh, lost, you know, what I was doing, and I jumped in the car and I left, and I remembered. Oh, yeah. yeah. I want to say it was like two, two hundred, two hundred some dollars. Maybe. Yeah, that sounds about yeah. right. But so that's what we're. Are we ready to dive in? Too? Yeah. We can dive in. Yes. Just a couple of notes out here. Jennifer okay. Boggs said she's drinking oh. an Ohio bourbon tonight, the Middle West Spirits Michelone Reserve, and then some Sycamore. Okay. If, if I'm saying that right, Michelone. Well, Jennifer really knows her bourbon, so. She's gonna... really, really smart. Love Would yeah. love to have her on the show. Yeah, Jennifer, if you ever want to come on the show and join us, uh, that'd be great. That goes for anybody out there. Uh, Dan Ruth, I think, is watching, and he's planning to come one of these uh, one of these weeks after the whatever this is, the pandemic uh, restrictions are over with. So. And uh, Chris Snyder, you must have drank all those. What was it, twenty two or twenty three bottles that he bought a few weeks back because he had to take another trip to New York last Saturday to buy more <laughs> whiskey and wine. And then he has a few choice words to say about the governor in Pennsylvania. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and nice. uh, Pennsylvania has even a more restrictive right. uh, government control on liquor, and we'll talk about that's kind of the subject today when we get to that. On the, sure, on the wizard. So, back to Old Forester Single Barrel. Back to Old Forester Single Barrel. So, <clears throat> let me give some notes on this. So, you guys were talking about a couple of the the brands that 
have come out. And that actually that started in 2014. The Whiskey Row series was launched, and it offered people a way to taste their way through the history of Old Forester. There are four different expressions that complete the series, and each represents a moment in a Old Forester's 150-year story. So. 1870 is the original batch, and it was 1870 that Old Forester was founded by George Garvin Brown. Mm -hmm. The first uh, commercial, right? First commercial uh, distillation operation. Okay. For bourbon. Uh, He named it after Dr. William Forester, um, dropped one of the R's, and it first came out at 90 proof. Um... The second one in the Whiskey Row series is an 1897 bottled in bond. And 1897, that is in line with the specifications that came out for the U.S. Bottled in Bond Act yeah, the year in 1897. And, yeah. and Old Eight, Forester increased... 1897? 1897, yeah. what did I say? 1997. 80, 87. 1897. Anyway, yeah. And um, it was that year that they increased their proof from 90 to 100 proof. The other expression is the 1910, which, Greg, you were talking about. It's Mm -hmm. the Old Fine Whiskey. Um, The specific piece of history for Old Forester in 1910 was there was a fire on the bottling line, and it shut it down. And they had Old Forester that was ready to be dumped and bottled. But instead, what they did is they took it and they put it in a second barrel while the line was being repaired. And that made Old Forester the very first double-barreled bourbon. Ah, All right. Very nice. And that was our topic last week about finishing and Mm -hmm. transferring multi-barrel agents. The last in the Whiskey Row series is the 1920-style Prohibition Whiskey, which Mm -hmm. everybody knows Prohibition, boo. Um, (laughs) So that's when Prohibition hit, and Old Forester was one of the only companies given permission to sell and manufacture whiskey and it's the only one that's still in the whiskey business today and like you said that's uh brown foreman so you know named after i'm assuming their founder george garvin brown yep um that's really cool on the and website oh i'm sorry but no and he was one of the guys that pushed very hard for the ball and bond act because of all the competitors is dumping all kinds of crap into right. the stuff they were making right tobacco juice iodine yeah you name it was going in to the stuff that they were selling as whisk as bourbon and he wanted to put a stop to that thank god i mean that was at the time the right thing to do so nice so the the website the old forester website talks about old forester having a bunch of firsts Um, one of them was the double barrel that i talked about with the 1910 the other, 1941, so just weeks after the Pearl Harbor attack, Old Forester started to produce the first high-proof industrial alcohol to help the World War II efforts. So they were, in essence, the first distillery to convert the entire production to ac- industrial-grade alcohol for the war effort. 1951, Old Forester introduced the holiday gift decanter. They were the first bourbon to create a decanter. I know that was all of the rage back in the day, and, and right. I know you've got a couple old decanters, car decanters, I think they are. Right. I always wonder, like, what the, what does that mean, making, all right, we're going to start making industrial alcohol now. I, I guess it, it's kind of like, as you're distilling, like, uh, who cares about heads, tails, cut, mm-hmm. center cut? I mean, you just, it's like, spottle it off. Right. That's right. Exactly. So as long as it burns, yeah, I mean, I guess we cut off the tails, but... <laughs> <laughs> then up to 2002 Old Forester celebrated the 156th birthday of the founder George Garvin Brown with the first release of the Old Forester birthday bourbon on September 2nd, 2002 this first is because this was the first vintage dated bourbon in the industry Gotcha. so some pretty cool things yeah um so you started talking about the Kentucky Derby, which is supposed right. to be, was supposed to be tomorrow. tomorrow. So only for the second time in the Kentucky Derby's 146 years has it been postponed. 
Uh, the only other time it was delayed was back in 1945 for the uh, World War II, right. or because of World War II. So what they did in, in its place back in 1945 is they decided to have some other electrifying competition uh, between animal adversaries, and instead of horses, turtles. <laughs> they had a turtle race. So, yeah, the, the race features the notoriously slow and shelled reptiles took the place of the horse derby, and the Kentucky Turtle Derby is back again this year, and it's going to be hosted by Old Forester. All right. Uh, you can catch this exciting race uh, tomorrow at 7 p.m. I'm assuming that's Eastern Standard Time on the Old Forester YouTube channel. I imagine if I know my buddy Pokey, he will have... He will know what the line is on all these different <laughs> turtles. Well, that's great. His name fits right in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's his nickname. Actually. All <laughs> I know is when Mickey. I get really cold, I get a bad case of the turtle. But, yes, yeah. yes, you do. You know, yeah, so yeah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> Won't even pull his head out, huh? little bastard. <laughs> <laughs> so they're, they're calling this the slowest eight minutes in sports. I know right. that very well. <laughs> Eight minutes, honey. Yeah. You never lasted. Hey. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> I'm working at eight seconds, but that's all right. So they're going to have... No jockeys. <laughs> Hung like a stud field. No motion. jockeys in this race. Yeah, no jockeys in this race. <laughs> Jockey straps. My turtle doesn't want to come out and play for nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they're going to have eight turtles, and they're going to be facing off uh, in a crawl race, and it actually begins at 7.05. Again, you can catch that. On the Old Forester YouTube channel, so they're going all out for this too. They've got okay. they got the Triple Crown horse racing announcer Steve Colmus. He's going to actually be calling the race remotely. Awesome. And they have the Churchill Downs race bugler will be playing for viewers from his home prior to the event to awesome. count things down. So, well. um, for those of you that are into betting, Old Forester says pre-race odds will be announced before the turtles take their marks, and anyone 21 years and older is invited to enjoy an Old Forester mint julep ah. at home. So okay. if you go on to Drizzly, I don't know anybody who is familiar with Drizzly, D-R-I-Z-L-Y, drizzly.com, and enter the code Old Forester, you can get $5 off. Okay, all right. So that's one of the uh, alcohol delivery services okay. that I, I found. Unfortunately, they don't deliver to us out of this. Of course dicks. not. Of course not. Now, if we order the bourbon, the birthday bourbon, do you think they'll be able to accommodate They'll put it on the turtle's back and it'll be here. And <laughs> maybe by the time the next birthday bourbon comes maybe out. Maybe they should September. have a hair race rather than a turtle yeah. race. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Too funny. So tonight, like you said, we are drinking the uh, store pick from Texas. Yes, Spikes. Right? Traditionally do, we'll read some of the uh, kind of our favorite distillers apps uh, tasting notes on this, but it is a single barrel. So that means whatever tasting notes we have, that was for that unique barrel. So uh, tonight's kind of special in that, you know, that's why I like single barrels because you know, they're all unique, right. and it depends on where it was located in the Rick House as to what environmental conditions it experienced relative to its peers who, you know, for example, might be five floors up where it's much warmer. So um, anyway, we'll, we'll get into that when we, when we taste. All right. So um, I think based on a suggestion from your son, we have a new rating that we're going to be using. Mm. Yes, my, my son Cameron noted that, uh, it, you know, gave us the suggestion that we, we kind of gave things a, yeah, I like it, yeah, I don't kind of uh, rating, but we need to be more empirical. So we are going to use a one to five rating system now after every tasting. And then uh, we'll, we'll give our combined uh, whiskey roundtable uh, rating score which will be the average of the three ratings and we'll post that every week with our show notes so and we'll put our our scale as far as like what we consider a one versus a five versus right. a three so you guys have some idea where we're coming from right when we give our rating as well and our it will keep uh we'll also post our individual ratings you might find that you tend to agree more with 
Greg than myself or Karen. So we'll, uh, you might have your favorite uh, coaches, as it were, and that, we'll make sure that we post all of that. So. Mm -hmm. Favorite coaches. I feel like I'm on The Voice. <laughs> yeah. But trust me, you don't want to hear me sing. Cause... I want to be CeeLo Green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go like this. CeeLo. <laughs> Sorry, right. that was bad. Yeah. He's, you know, he's got those little arms, CeeLo. His arms are thin. Yeah, yeah. They look like him on TV. I was watching, uh, uh, off topic, I was watching, uh, um, oh my goodness, what's his name's house from... Uh, oh, Daryl? Daryl's house. From uh, Hollow Notes. Uh, Hollow Notes, yeah. And uh, CeeLo Green came on there and... Uh, I think they did I Can't Go For That, if I remember the song. Okay. Oh, my God, was it great. I could watch that all day long. Wait, Daryl Daryl has, like, a reality so, show? No, Daryl Hall has what he calls Daryl's House. It's actually a bar restaurant. Oh, I thought this was his, like, recording studio yeah. or well, something it's, they come into. Yeah, it's actually a bar restaurant. It's long. I forget uh, where they're at. And uh, he invites all these different, uh, you know, he's had, like, the OJs on and all these different people uh, they come on and they do a song and uh, they get, like, get the band back together so to say it's, it's really cool you got to watch it on YouTube it's awesome and they do some great great songs and uh, CeeLo I was Thank watching you. a recent one that it was from like six years ago but CeeLo Green came on and did uh, did it with them and it was it was really really good so if you ever get a chance you want to entertain yourself while you're sitting at home sitting on your thumb punch up uh, Daryl's house on YouTube and, and watch some of those videos. Fantastic. All notes have more hits than any pop duo in history. Mm -hmm. so. I love them. Mm -hmm. I do love them. I think they're great. Word for I don't know. Some people say I can't go for that. But. <laughs> <laughs> you are stupid. <laughs> is it time to taste? It All right, let's, let's, get, taste. let's get them out. Let's get them out. Pass it around, please. Pass it around. So I like how you wore your old Forrester yeah. shirt for this evening's tasting tonight, Doug. Sure. One of my favorite distillers. All right. All right. So one of the things I noticed right off the bat was the color. All right. All right. Yes. Yeah. For um, four and a half year old, this has a lot of body. Uh, and uh, you'll see some legs there and a very dark color for a four and a half year old. So... Whiskey, that's kind of the magic number for bourbon, it, um, is about four years. And if you, once you hit that magic four-year mark, it's, it's, you're you know, usually going to have a pretty good bourbon. If everything you else hope. is done right. You hope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you can have a good one at three and a half, but there's something magic about four when it comes to bourbon, so... All right. Yeah, nice legs on that. And really nice deep color. So official nosing from another Old Forester single barrel review. Um, nose heavily oak with layers of brown sugar, brulee, dark fruit, biscuits, vanilla, and a light bit of acetone, grain, and nutmeg. Who's ass? Acetone. <laughs> Palette. Well, every one of these. Bourbon, I sorry. think every one of these. So the palette is oak, burnt caramel, dark fruit, vanilla taffy, brown sugar, peanuts, biscuit, and a light bit of acetone again, and baking spice. So this reviewer. When you say acetone, I think of like the stuff that takes off your nail polish. Acetone is a acetone. Exactly. That's what they must mean. But yep. um, finish dark oak, vanilla taffy, dark fruit. Peanuts and a bit of baking spice, toasted biscuit, and acetone. Acetone. Look so, at me. I'm anyway, running. so this was for that unique barrel. Uh, so um, one of the things I, I have to full disclosure, I'm not a huge Old Forester fan. Okay. I think it's it's typically a little hotter than what I like, but on the nose, this reminds me of wild turkey any kind of wild turkey brand it has that smell to me so I'm actually kind of excited to try this one I'm getting a lot of uh, dark fruit definitely oak vanilla um, I don't know about acetone I don't uh, know because mm -mm. no. that's a very powerful odor everybody knows that the odor of nail polish right. so I'm not 
thankfully not getting much are you, of that. Are you getting any nuts on the nose? Maybe later. I got some. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> what are you doing? I got some. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. Apparently, I'm bringing the nuts to the party. <laughs> Baking spice, biscuit, I, I get those pretty pretty strong. So, so I go so, back to the old Forster single barrel, uh, which... Uh, uh, we helped with the pick for the Cleveland Bourbon Co-op. That was the first one we ever did. Was the old Forester thing over on. So oh, I, nice. I a, no, I didn't a know. Big part of that. It was I didn't great. know that, or I didn't remember that. Yeah. But anyway, are we ready to taste? Let's do it. Man. I am. I'm, yeah, I'm excited. Wow. Fruit. Cherry. Yep. Dark fruit. Yep. Um, Oh, Almost a little bit fruit. of stone fruit, I, like peach. Or? I get a dry oak out of it. I get a dryness to it. On the on the finish, definitely. Yep. You're gonna laugh at me. It's probably the acetone, but uh, I almost get a little a hint of mint. Yeah, so. I, I I get you there. Yeah, and um, that's very rich. It um, is. It is. It's buttery. Very, very, very buttery. Yeah. Some some. Yeah. But that's where I get the kind of biscuit, mm -hmm. almost a right. buttery. You said this was 90 proof, Doug? Yeah, it's 90, 90 proof. proof. Yeah. It's a strong 90 proof. Again, it, it's definitely the old Forester strength to it. I Yeah, you know, mm. I was pre, pre-drinking. pre It's sweet. But, it's, um, it's, 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 it's got definitely a cherry sweetness to it. It's very good. Yeah, that, that fruit comes through. Uh, the dark fruit is, is definitely there. Uh, and single barrel old Forester is one of my favorite drinks, too. It's in my top five, mm. for sure. Very good. Yeah, I think I'm going to rate it hard. We didn't talk about the mash bill, but it, it's 72% corn, 18% rye, and 10% malted barley. So nice. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I don't get the whisk, the uh, wild turkey on the taste like I do on the nose. Right. And it's, it's always it's always interesting, uh, anybody that has been getting into whiskey about, you know, trying to figure out uh, their palate, so to say, and their, you know, what they like. It always amazes me, the smell from the taste. The, uh, I'm getting on the finish some dark chocolate. Okay. For sure. Hmm. Cocoa. That's very good. I get the oak. Yeah, I get a lot. I get, I definitely get oak. I get a, like, dry oak. You know, some, some whiskeys, they give you, it's almost like wine. Some of the, some of the Merlots or the Cabs, they give you that dry, like, that dry wine yeah. on your tongue. I get that with this. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. I mean, I'm an oak fan. I like oaky bourbons. I love oaky single malts. Um, I like oaky wines. If they're red wines. So, right. Um, so, yeah, I definitely favor that. House H. And ours is from Warehouse K. And what's interesting is it's from floor number one. So it's actually on the ground floor, which is going to be the coolest environment that you'll find in that particular rick the, house the, the least the least change of of least no uh, humidity yeah. no low humidity it'll be the coolest, the coolest less less prone to more a consistent seasonal. temperature yeah. absolutely so that tends to make a more quiet spirit if you will and it might age a little bit slower mm -hmm. so it might drink like a little bit less than it's four and a half years compared to one that was say on the seventh or eighth floor so um, but I, I really I dig this it's really good it is f fantastic. very satisfied very, very satisfied. nice thanks for yeah. thanks for bringing this yes, yeah this, yeah. Thank you this very is much. really tasty and That's like great. I said I was not I am not an old Forester fan but this is good this one is good my, so one of my top fives for sure I uh, if I was gonna rate it I'd rate it uh, I'd rate it a five and the reason I rate it for a five is the consistency of the smell, the taste, the after finish, and uh, it's, I've drank a lot of Old Forster picks and regular standard Old Forster that were not special blends, and they're all consistent. And again, that goes back to So let me to get that. this straight. Go ahead. On our one to five scale, yes. the first time we were deploying it, you're going right with a five. I'm going right with a five. The best ever. Yep. Ranks, again, it's, in my, it's in, in my top five. Well, if it if it ranks in your top five whiskeys, then it it ought to be, damn, four point nine or a five, right? By yeah, that's what you're, I said. you're setting the bar real high. I am setting the bar high. Karen, you what do you threw, say? Threw it out there, didn't you? I did. I'm gonna go with. I'm teetering between a, th three and a three and a half, 
Um, I think I'm going to go 3.5 on this one. 3.5. And just to be fair, you're not, you don't like really punchy bourbons. You're not Correct. a fan, right? Correct. Okay. You right. like it softer. Right. I like I like the softer, non-harsh bourbon. Not to say that this is harsh. It's just yeah, harsh I don't, for me. Yeah, I don't well, think you get it in the 90 proofs or a little bit higher. They can be. Yeah. They can be very, very ethanol. You get a lot of the heat, real spicy. But this this has a, a good warm to it. So I'm a big Old Forester fan. Single barrel, obviously, this is very special. Um, I do like it a lot. Um, but I, I got to leave myself a little room for future. So um, not to say that I'm going to underscore it because of that, but I would put it somewhere um, on our scale. It's darn good, so I'm going to give it a four and a half. All right, there you go. Wow. Four point five, you go, kids. Four point five. So. Go. I feel like I'm being a very unfair judge with my no, training. No, no, no. Hey, everybody's got no, their we, own That's, that's ballot, our system, man. right? Everybody's so we'll have e ballot. each person's individual ratings each week and our overall uh, whiskey roundtable average score. Any of you, any of you out there that are watching the show, uh, if you've never had the, if you like Old Forester and you and you've had it before, that's great. Uh, if if not, I suggest trying it if you can find a bottle of the single barrel uh, in other states that you may live in. Um, I highly recommend that. I think you'd be pleasantly supply, surprised, and I want to say that's about a fifty dollar bottle. For, I, I mean, the notes I had said 40, but I'm sure in actuality, because of some of the issues with distribution mm -hmm. and availability, it's much more. That's probably the suggested retail, and that's a good segue into what we're going to be talking about on the Whiskey Wizard. All right. Well, talk about the Whiskey Wizard. All right. Why are we going to talk about it? Why don't we... Are we just going to go to well, it? Let's go. Let's, let's go, go to it. Um, right. We'll, we'll uh, be back in a few minutes after the Wizard. All right. See you in a few. All right. Hang tight, kids. Whiskey Wizard! It's the Whiskey Wizard! Hello and welcome to the Whiskey Wizard, where we say that whiskey making takes scientific knowledge and artisan skill and dedication and a bit of the wizard's alchemy of light, air, earth, and fire. So if you are a new whiskey enthusiast, you may have been wondering why you can't find that distiller's offering you've just read about. It never seems to be in your local stores. If you're a longtime aficionado, you're likely well aware of the restrictions placed upon the whiskey marketplace and likely have developed your preferred means and methods for dealing with it and obtaining those favorite selections. Let's be direct here. A lot depends on where you are. The USA has one of the most complicated systems for the distribution and sale of liquor that can be found globally. The fact of the matter is that each state determines how alcohol sales will be managed. In some cases, even counties have been given some of that power by the state. Thus, we still have cases where we have some counties that are dry counties, as it were, where sales of alcohol are prohibited. Before Prohibition, brewers and distillers often owned the establishments where the public accessed the local supply. These were known as tied-in houses or saloons. And as you can imagine, these selections that were offered in these places was anything but fair and unrestricted. When the Noble Experiment or 18th Amendment was repealed in 1933, the federal government left alcohol to the states to regulate. Most states sought to eliminate tied houses, increase public safety, and collect tax revenue. This is why the tiered system was created whereby no entity could occupy more than one of the three specified tiers, manufacturing, distribution, and retail. While some states allow an almost free market approach, others are more heavy handed and exercise a virtual monopoly over the distribution and or retail of alcohol and spirits. Here in Ohio, the state uh, heavily controls the distribution tier. So how does this affect you, the consumer? Looking for that bottle of Sam Houston 12 year old? As we said in the US, instead of one market, we have essentially 50 markets, each with their own rules and licensing. 
So the distiller has to contend with all of this for getting their product on the retail shelf. For limited releases then, the distiller may simply pick those states where demand and ease of operation facilitate business. Of course, the distiller has little control once it's in the hands of the distribution chain as far as what retailers end up with and who gets those limited supply offerings. Do any of you imagine that greed and corruption could ever come into play during that scenario? And if you think you can simply get what you need online, guess again. Because of the tiered system, many online retailers are prohibited from selling into or shipping across many state lines. The obvious result of much of this regulation is the growth of the often maligned secondary black market or gray market whiskeys. Selling whiskeys as a business is illegal without a license, of course. Hey, I'm not talking about trading a bottle or two amongst your pals, but there are career bottle flippers out there doing this as a living all because of our post-prohibition legacy, antiquated system for alcohol sales and distribution. Hopefully, if enough of us voting consumers demand it, this may change one day. So there needs to be some regulation of liquor sales by governments, as all reasonable people accept. But we likely all want access to good product supply options as consumers that's not limited by government bureaucrats or antiquated statutes. And if we want that bottle of Waller 12, it'd be nice if supply, demand, and competition set the price and one could count on its availability at their local retailer. The needs of consumers should be paramount. Everything else is, well, secondary. That's all for now. This is Douglas Dunbar, the Whiskey Wizard for the Whiskey Roundtable, and now, Back to the live show. All right, All right. whiskey wizard. We had to quickly. <laughs> Somebody needed a refill. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. All righty. <laughs> maybe that 4.5 should have been maybe almost a 5. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Going in for seconds. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, it's kind of a 4. Point. Can definitely needed to restock here. Nothing like doing it live. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so I mean, um, supply and availability is an issue. Um, particularly in Ohio and states like Pennsylvania, others that you know have more state involvement in the distribution or retail side of things. So um, anyway, I just think that we ought to let the market decide what prices ought to be, and let let uh, I think if if those if if the market determines the price, then there'll be more availability for everybody. Sure. And so I'm gonna but, bottle <laughs> kids. Yeah, yeah, so. Sure. Very cool. Yeah. So again, from what I say, warehouse K and floor number one for this particular selection. So ah, good stuff. Um, we had some comments. We want to just. <laughs> oh wait, yes. let me comment on a comment. Oh okay. Really, Nick? Gorilla? <laughs> right. I saw your last girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> she had more back hair than you. <laughs> than him. That's saying something. Well, and that's why I was laughing so hard because you guys were doing your tastings and I'm reading some of the comments out here. Y'all are killing me. You're making me laugh. <laughs> You're making me laugh, really. Um, sorry, I gotta find all of this stuff now. People are looking for well, Mickey what? Hopkins uh -huh. because they want to know uh, he's gonna been to, he's, he's been to the Derby like 99 times in a row. And uh, he, if it comes to horse racing... He is the world expert of all the people I've ever met. And um, so I know how much it kills him that there's no derby or any of this stuff going on. Um, but I'm sure he'll have a line on tomorrow's turtle race. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's uh, what Patrick All the Brovern will be uh, tuning in, and there'll be some good betting and banter going on. I think we can count on that. So I'd like to sh give a shout-out to the Rev, who ah, spent uh, Easter Rev. with us yes. a right, few right. weeks ago. Great guy. The Bishop. I want to give a shout-out to uh, my two little nephews, uh, Trevor and Grady. Clean your room. You guys are killing me. All right, love you, kids. That's right. Yeah, here's Nick. Okay, Gorilla, drink the stuff already. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Shauna asks, where does the deep color come from if it's only four years? Is it uh, a charring? Charring. Right? Charring. It's probably, that's a great question. It probably is the level of char that they're putting on there. That's pretty dark. Uh, for four. a four and a half year old, that is a pretty dark whiskey. So, good question, Shauna. That's probably why they're probably using a, a four or five char on that. If yeah. anybody knows in the audience, then yeah, please comment. I think that's, um, you know, we did the charring uh, some time back. We did a radio show on charring, and you brought the staves uh, from. Uh, from Old Forster. Yes. Those we have the Old Forster right there. right there from Old Forster. They're right behind you, actually. So, but we don't know what. We don't know what char or whiskey yeah. that was for. Right. But, but I think we. Should, uh, I would like to revisit that show. Well, we will. In fact, um, I'm going to be taking. Uh, we're going to retour some of those Whiskey Wizard episodes from the first ones that I did. Mm -hmm. We're going to walk through the whole process from the grains, through the mash, through distilling, and the barrel aging. We'll go through that whole process again because I think we have a lot of new listeners and we'll redo them in the new format and, and all that. So I know Chris had a comment. What was Chris's comment? <laughs> Nobody listens to Chris. Chris has so many comments <laughs> and I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Okay. I was reading some Chris, of the I got three words for you. Go to sleep. <laughs> well, it was funny because I was reading the comments um, while you all were watching and enjoying the Whiskey Wizard. I was reading some of the comments, so I'm not sure which yeah. one you were talking about, Doug, but this one, I, this one makes me laugh, too. Chris Snyder out here says, I think some people who were planning on being here got very excited about the roundtable this afternoon and drank way too much whiskey. It's either that or there was another leprechaun attack. <laughs> he had a comment. Uh, he had one of his anti-bourbon comments, but he's a strict single malt guy. So. Oh, yeah, let me find. Typical of Chris. Oh, he said, yeah, I thought all bourbon had tobacco spit in it. Yeah, yeah there we go. That's, that's, that's my Christmas. That's the one you're talking about. Okay, and then Glenn asked something, I think, about me telling about all the constituents of oh, single malt. Yeah. And oh, gosh, that yeah, that question for the Whiskey Wizard. That may be another show all in itself. Uh, Charlie Brown. It was asking the Manhattan yes. Beach of yes. the Manhattan Beach Browns. Charlie Brown of the Manhattan Beach Browns. <laughs> he wanted to ask the Whiskey Wizard for a general review of all the elements, ingredients, and factors that lead to a fine single malt. Well, um, I'll just say that in, in upcoming episodes of the Whiskey Wizard, we'll be talking about those kinds of things when it comes to both the mash and the barrel aging processes, which are what... Uh, what contributes to most of the compounds, uh, flavor and aroma compounds, and uh, taste elements to, to whiskey. So those in those two parts, um, distillation has an effect on how much you carry over during the distillation process, how many, how many distillations you do, things like that, and, and what type of stills you use. All those things impact uh, the things that you're talking about there. So. We will cover that in future episodes of the Whiskey Wizard. So. Well, um, Derek reached out, wanted to know how to get on to the scroll. How to get onto the scroll? Yeah. You just sign in. You start watching our YouTube show. And There's a, a little. There should be a, thing. Should should be be a right next to it, right? Chat, chat, During the live show, it should be. Yeah. yeah, it should yeah. be there. There's, um, there. Underneath the actual show, there should be a, a space to comment, and you'll see the feed, which uh, rolls right next to the live show. But no worries, if I were in the audience, I'd be probably one of those people that wouldn't know how to do that either. So. Yeah, I wouldn't either. And it's different from my view than it is yeah, for right. other views. But it, it shouldn't be too hard. Got a bunch of people that love your introduction on the Whiskey Wizard. Oh, yeah. Oh. They just, okay. they, they're out there loving it. Charlie Brown, he loves it. Uh, Chris Snyder. Yeah, my girl. My intro. girls helped me with the audio portion of that, as you probably guessed, those, mm -hmm. that, those of you that know me, so... It's a very Shakespearean yeah. costume. Yes, of course. Yeah, that's what I was going for. And I don't know what I was doing with the whiskey there exactly, but I was, I was enhancing. You, you were definitely, character, yeah. definitely doing something. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Matt Souza's out there. Matty, Matt, what's up, Doc? Matt. Love you, Matt. Stephen Williams is out there. Brother, my brother from Texas. Right. What's up? Where's Donnelly? Um, Nick, yeah, he knew I was laughing at the gorilla comment. <laughs> so, even before I announced it, he knew that's what I was laughing at. Oh, um, Chris Snyder says that, um, he, it, he says he loves the Buffalo Trace special. Something that you gave to him when he was oh, here. Oh, the barrel pick. Barrel pick. Single yeah, pick. Yeah, so I, 
It's glad to hear, Chris. You're we're we're bringing you around. Yeah. It's going to take some time. I know. But we'll we'll turn you into a Clevelander eventually. And he likes rye. He's open to rye because mm -hmm. um, that's a very Pennsylvania kind of a thing. Right. And I gave you. He sent me. He was the one that sent me that Pennsylvania Dutch uh, malt whiskey. Right. That, right. Well, if we can obtain that and do that on the show, we certainly will. So awesome. So awesome. for the, those of you that want to revert back to your your Daryl Hall and Oates right. comment, uh, Polis is telling us that the show is called Live from Daryl's House. Yes, thanks, Jeff. And Jennifer Boggs is saying there's actually a Hall and Oates hotline. I love this number. 719-26 Oates. <laughs> I did actually meet those guys at uh, in college. At a, they played at our college, and we got invited to the after show party and uh daryl hall hit on my girlfriend so nice that bastard yeah. yeah yeah did she go for it I, yeah yeah uh, he, no he, no no yeah no, he, no, he went no, home by himself <laughs> me versus daryl hall oh, God, what was i thinking yeah I <laughs> that's why we call him big sexy that's no right. i can't you can't i can't compare that story with chris snyder whose date um was hit on uh by, uh, gosh, I'm forgetting the name. Christopher Walken. There we go. Christopher Walken. At a bar in New York City. More cowbell? Did she yeah. have a cowbell? Is that yeah. why he liked her so much? I, I, don't I don't know. But that's a story for when he's on the show. Oh, my God. I got to hear that story. That's awesome. That's awesome. That is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think, kids? I don't know. We got news? Got any news? Gee, do um, you have anything? I do. I have a little bit. Okay. Let me get there. Sorry, kids. It's okay. All right. Well, you know, they've postponed the uh, Kentucky Derby, so... Uh, I hear they're doing a turtle race. They are doing a <laughs> turtle, turtle race. race. <laughs> Somebody's got a bad turtle. That's all i got to say. So, hang on one second. I yeah, so for, for those of you, again, we just want to give a shout-out to the turtle race because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It's yeah. the Old Forester YouTube channel, and it's... Tomorrow at 7 p.m. Um, I'm thinking sure it's, it's central Eastern or Central. Or so. Central, but of course, uh, Old Forester is located in Kentucky Central Time, I believe. But uh, so you might want to just check that out or do some research there. I'm not sure. Ahead of time, yeah. It might so, be 6 Eastern. That's typically when the Derby is, right. 6 something Eastern, right, Eastern time. time. So if they're trying to keep true to that, you know, anyway, check it out. Just be sure. We'll. We'll, uh, we'll include that. And uh, one of those is Old Fitzgerald Bottled and Bond 16-year-old, which has just been released, mm -hmm. weeded from Heaven Hill. Uh, another one is the uh, Blood Oath Pack 6. Ah. Yes. To, uh, to, uh, from Lux, uh, Lux Road Distillers. Yep. Um, Pack 5 is one of my favorite ones. Right. That's with, the, uh, the rough, Caribbean rough cast. Caribbean cast, yeah. correct. Um, old Charter, or Old Carter, I guess it would be. American whiskey batch number three, hundred and thirty nine point two proof. Holy shit. You should I probably just... start with that before the turtle race <laughs> and work your way to the lower proofs for right. sure. Um, Four Gate Kelvin collaboration is a uh, is another one with the uh, anniversary for the first release of this month. So uh, their latest batch has just hit the shelves. And it's a blend of 12-year bourbon finished in rum, cognac, cask. How about that? Rum oh, and cognac. cognac. Yeah. How about that? Ah, so, you hear that low imports? Already? Listen, kids. Yeah, it sounds like pull out your wallet because it's $200 a bottle. Oh. So which you know, it's the, about the, the price old, of the, the, all of these. Yeah. Actually, that the price of all of those actually just about you know. So they're they're definitely uh, definitely up. And then the. Uh, the Woodford Reserve Batch Proof, 123.6 uh, proof, and uh, that is an, another one to run from, uh, let me see, Drinking Woodford Derby Day is only fitting as a brand representing the sponsor for the run. Of course, Woodford is always the choice of the Kentucky Derby. Yes, it but is. But it's right down there, yeah. so um, that's, that's, that's great. I think I got a comment here from... Uh, Derek Polarchek. Derek, um, what? No Village Martini? No Jackson Gray? Social drinks? <laughs> all right. Well, hey, if you're buying, we're in. Okay? So that's all i got to say. All I know is that uh, every time I go to my uh, nephew's restaurant uh, is always very costly, and it's never with the food. So... <laughs> 
Yeah, but you're usually taking like your friends and yeah, well, that's, we like to throw that's down how we when roll. It comes to the alcohol. <laughs> um, by the way, Chris Snyder said it wasn't his date; it was oh. just a friend. Oh, oh that we trying to say oh, now? Okay. Sure, okay. Chris. Hey, Chris. <laughs> we get you. All right. Say no more. Oh my. I won't even try to do my imitation. <laughs> Christopher Walken. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's a funny story. Bert but for another time. Yeah. So um, just a couple things. Um, here, what's going on here? So uh, Ben Romick, uh, it's a little bit of single malt news. The space side, the small space side distillery they introduced a new expression to its core single malt range. Cast strength vintage two. 2008 batch one will replace the current Benromic 100 proof in the range. It, it consists of whiskeys all distilled and filled in either first fill ex sherry or ex bourbon casts in 2008. They were married together and bottled in 2019 at 10 years of age. This has yielded about 5,500 bottles and given the natural cask strength at 59.2. 57.9 ABV, no chill filtering, natural color. Um, we'll recommend retail price at 59, well, 60 pounds, basically. And I don't feel like doing the math, but I don't multiply that by 1.28 to, or 1.2 to get your get your dollars. Which Lag? distiller was that, did you say? That has been Romic. Ben Romic? Yeah. Okay. Space side, small space side. Uh, Lag is a new distillery on the Isle of Iran. Officially announced that it has started production at the Lag Distillery, which is located on the south of the island and owned by the Isle of Iran Distillers. Will produce a richly peated single malt, and it will contrast their uh, lighter non-peated style they've produced at the Iran Distillery in the north end of the island. Cast number one was filled on April 10th with a spirit measuring 50 ppm. I'm assuming that's phenol, so that's a a measure of the peat, uh, peatness of the whiskey. So 30 and up is is pretty good peat uh, level. So at 50, that's gonna be a a nice peaty whiskey for those that like that, me included. So, and it's followed at cast strength. Um, So that's kind of all I got on that. couple more things but I think we'll save them for next week. All right, sounds good. That's all I got. I just didn't have the time to uh, do more history. I apologize. Yeah, I, I so. just I want to mention and and I don't want to get too far away from from the date that it was released, but we had posted something on our whiskey roundtable page for all of you Slipknot fans. Mm-hmm. Um, they are bringing out their own bourbon whiskey. It's uh, got the Iowa ties because Slipknot, if you don't right. know Slipknot, they're kind of a heavy metal, hard rock, well, way beyond hard rock right. uh, group from Iowa. So uh, they they went into uh, business with an Iowa distiller to make their... So in Iowa, where would they get the corn? I don't know. It's not much in Iowa. Anyway. Just kidding. Well, if you were I, I really listen- knew that was a joke, everybody. <laughs> if, I knew if, that was a joke. If if, uh, if you were to listen to uh, uh, Ronnie's eulogy, uh, it's probably from Louis Field. And oh. they were, they were Is that dead. field corn? <laughs> no, nah. you got to boil it, put butter on it. You got to cook it, put butter on it. It'll be great. <laughs> I'm sorry, kids. I just oh my goodness. Yeah, that was great. But that uh, I think that that's the second edition, and it actually hit the shelves last week. So uh, you're able to catch the Slipknot bourbon whiskey. Check it out. Amen. 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 Cool. So just a reminder to our listeners, as the days get warmer, please make sure that you're getting enough water, especially if it's frozen and surrounded by whiskey. Amen. Um, you want to talk about the uh, turtle thing? turtle race again and where to get all that absolutely so it that is on the old forester youtube channel and it's called the slowest eight minutes in sports there's going to be eight <laughs> turtles they're going to be facing off in a very exciting race and uh it's we think it's six six o'clock maybe eastern six o'clock time. eastern but just you'll want we'll 
you know, we'll check that out. We'll put it on our Facebook page. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, they are taking bets. There's pre-race odds. So, you know, get together with some friends. I think we're going to do that, yeah, too. Yeah, we're going to do it and, uh, for sure. We'll, uh, we'll bet on the, the fastest turtle. Amen. Sounds like fun. Absolutely. Awesome. All right. All right. Well, Shall we finish up with a quote? Yes, sir. Oh, I love these. Okay. So today, uh, the quote comes from the great W.C. Fields, who said, Always carry a flagon of whiskey in case of snake bite. Furthermore, always carry a small snake. <laughs> so long, everybody. <laughs> All right. We are your hosts, Big G. Karen Helen Keller. Doug Dunbar. Hey, uh, again, the show's dedicated to uh, Lou Mantosh. Miss you. See you soon. Love you. All right. Have a great weekend. Bye, everyone. Enjoy. If whiskey stopped working, every bar in town would be closing their doors, shutting down. Everybody would be trapped with their thoughts, because nothing else would pay like bourbon or scotch. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. Stopped working, where the hell would I be? Probably wasting lots of money trying therapy. If whiskey, whiskey stopped working, what the hell would I do? Honestly, to tell you the truth, I wouldn't be over you. Tennessee